In today's Quick Thursday tip, we're gonna talk about how to have Power Apps play a sound on Quick. It sounds like a poet rhyme thing, but I promise it won't be super cheesy like that. But what we wanna do is we wanna make it so when you press a button, a noise plays, or when another event in your app occurs, you give some type of audio feedback. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today is all about Power Apps play a sound on click. The idea is that you wanna press button and you wanna make some noise. Just kinda of giving that user that feedback. And I've done this before in a video a couple years ago where we had it go Meow, every time we switched screens cause I was being a dork. But I thought today we would cover it in a little more context and make sure you understood all the way and just have a standalone video in this quick little format. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna customize the app that we built earlier this week, which was a camera app. And I realized like after I put the video, I was like, wouldn't it be nice if the camera made a camera noise when they took a picture? I thought that would be nice. So let's switch over to my desktop and show you how I did that. Okay, so over here on my desktop, we got the super zoomed in camera, hi me. And what I wanted, and hopefully the sound comes through, let's try this out. That's right, a nice photo shoot. And we should have gotten, uh, you should have heard all those sounds. And really all that's happening here is I have a audio control hidden on the screen. So if we go and look right here, well, I go to the right screen, don't I? So if we go down here, there's an audio control. I just made it invisible, but so we'll change the visible back to true. And so what I'm doing is I am acting like I'm pressing the button or I, I'm having the equivalent of them clicking this button but I'm doing it as we're taking the picture with a camera. And so when you press the camera button, what we're going to do is we're going to reset the audio control and then we're going to set a variable to false and then set that variable to true. And if we look at the audio control itself, the way that that works, is you go to the start property, you just put that variable here. And the art of changing a variable from false to true is what triggers this to happen. So let's build this ourselves um, so we can kind of take a look at exactly how I would do that. And the first thing you're gonna do is, you know, we're gonna do this in a different order. I'm gonna go over here to my media. And so here you can see that I've already got an image. I got the camera flash earlier. We're gonna upload one. And so before the show, I recorded a uh, sound of me, that famous boop sound, right? Apparently in all my videos, when I press the buttons, I like to say boop. I, I never noticed until someone pointed it out to me. But so we've uploaded that. And for fun, what I found, I'd never seen this before, I can actually say add to canvas and this will throw an audio control pre-configure to use that sound. And if we hit play and press the button, boop. You get me saying boop, boop, huh, I like it. Um, so that gets the audio control set up. If you don't wanna add it that way, you could have also went here to media and then found the audio control right here, same exact thing. And then we could have added the media this way. So different ways to do the same thing. I just thought it was new, so I show you. Okay, so now that we've kind of got that, what I want to do is I want to make this bigger because it's really small. Um, so now we want to trigger that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a button here, and we'll just change the text to play sound. And when you play the sound, all we're going to do with this button is we're going to say, hey, you, I want you to, well, first thing I want you to do is I need you to reset that control. So reset. And this is audio five, right? You can click on that and you look down here. That's how I know. A lot of times people are like, how do you know what it is? That's audio five. So there's audio five. And that will put the uh, audio player back at the starting position. And then we're going to say set var make sound, right? We're just making up a variable. And we're going to set it to false. And then you're going to say set var make sound to true. And so that's what you're going to do on this side. And the idea here is that now we have a variable that we're gonna take from its true state, set it to false, and then set it to true again. So the, the change from false to true is what we're after. Because now we'll go to the audio control and we'll say, hey you, your start property is going to be var make sound. And so then now if we hit play and we say play sound, boop, boop, boop. It works just the way we want. And then because we don't want people to see our cute little sound machine, right? I figured that. Then we just take the visible property and say, not there anymore. And we should still get the same result. Boop, boop, boop. Awesome possum. 
So now that you understand that that's how it works, there is nothing stopping you if you want to have it, you know, make fun noises every time your users navigate. Or maybe you want to play a little ditty while they're waiting on the loading screens to run. You know, I don't care how you do it or what you do with it, but the idea, that's the logic you need, right? Reset the control and then toggle a variable from true to false and then from false to true, right? So you're going to need both of these because a lot of times people are like, well, why can't I just do this? And so if we take that out and we hit play, boop, it works once, but it doesn't work again because the variable is not changing. So it's not triggering the audio control. So that will not work in the long run. Oh, undo. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Yay. That's it, folks. Nice, easy one for you today. But it, it just bothered me that my camera, when I did the video earlier this week, when I watched the, the replay, I was like, wait a minute, why doesn't my camera make that noise? And so that was what I wanted for you guys. I wanted the camera to make all that noise. Um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Uh, if you want to make fun of me for making silly videos like this, I get that too. It's, it's your right. Um, also, a quick reminder that I am running a couple of live classes. If you want to get more training, you want to spend more time with this guy, then, you know, we've got the live classes coming up. February 22nd will be the App Builders class. So that's the one if you have faked it until you can make it. That's the one for you. So I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about Power Apps. Maybe not all the nerdy, is nerdy, nerdy, nerdy stuff, but I'm going to expose you to the whole product and talk to you about best practices and just make sure you know all the things you can do and focus really on how to learn what you need to learn. Or on the other date, March 8th, I can't remember the dates, um, on March 8th, we're going to have a uh, live class. Also, that is going to be the App Builders uh, or Dataverse for Teams class. And so the Dataverse for Teams class, we're going to learn about building Power Apps, um, uh, flows or Power Automates and Power Virtual Agent, those chatbots. We're going to learn about all those different tools and how they apply in the Dataverse for Teams environment because I really think that for 2021, we're going to see a lot more Dataverse for Teams being more common. So we have a whole class dedicated to that now. So looking forward to that one. It'll be my second time teaching that one, whereas the app builders have taught a thousand times. But the classes are taught live, interactive. You join via a Teams call. Me, you, and a bunch of your close friends, or soon to be close friends, will all jump in there and we'll have a good time. If you have any questions or thoughts about that, you can email us training at powerapps911.com. But if not, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.